sales pages. It's time to feel good with your brochures, with your recruitment, with your attraction for your clients. It's time to feel good. And too often we don't come with our own feeling good box checked. So then you want me to check it for you. And then I get exhausted up here because I did the work for you and for me. We ain't doing that. I just told you. Yes. So Canada, are you ready? Okay, I adore. 
adore my family. They get on my nerves, but I don't want to live without them, right? I'm like, oh my God, I love you so much. They're like, we're coming over. No, don't, nobody's home. <laughs> but my nephew, who is 17 years old now, my nephew only liked food that we cooked. And we're in the South, so that meant fried chicken, macaroni and cheese with five cheeses, salted butter, heavy whipping cream. You cook the heavy whipping cream, the salted butter, the double eggs, the salt, the white pepper, you make a thick roux, you do your macaroni, you pour it over, you stir in your five cheeses, then you bake it for 45 minutes and then you pull it out so it's like this creamy heap. Y'all want my mac and cheese, don't you? Mm -hmm. I ain't making it for you. And so my nephew wanted always home cooked food. Well, whenever we would give him McDonald's or Burger King or fast food or anything, he would throw it. He would literally, you sit him down and he'd just toss it at you. And so at the time, there was a popular show in America called The Nanny. And the nanny said that if you wanted to make a pivot in the behavior of your child, you simply needed to lower to their level, deepen your tone, and tell them their behavior is unacceptable. <laughs> so my nephew at the time was about, I don't know, between two and three, but he could self-express pretty well. He's very articulate right now. As a matter of fact, he just got an opportunity to sign on to go to Morehouse University on a full ride in Atlanta, Georgia. And so he says to me, I say to him, Isaiah, because I had to do the tone, Isaiah, your behavior is unacceptable. And my sister's kids call me Nee, short for Amy. And Isaiah looked at me and he said, Nee, why are you talking to me like that? <laughs> and in that moment, we realized he was gonna outsmart the nanny's process. But the reason that I tell a story like that to a five-figure leader is because I'm going to go into a conversation around questioning ability. I'm also going to go into a conversation from that around cynicism, jealousy, or anger at the success of others. My sister and I had a war about parenting her kids because they were her kids, you said it. And I was the aunt with no kids, but I had all the answers. Don't judge me. <laughs> My answers are great. And so for a five-figure leader, that's a great story to be able to tell. Well, <clears throat> then I realized, wait a minute, sometimes I go into environments where I'm talking to a six or seven-figure leader, and there are other things that aren't working for them, and it looks like this. They have scattered product lines, no pivot in the pa no patience in the pivot. The last one, D B S O Y A, they're doing business sitting on their ass. That's where you start making money that you get real lazy in your money making. And so you go, ah, you know it's coming, and so you take more vacations, you let your general manager run the show. The business completely loses touch with your original vision and intention. And not only that, you don't redeem your time in something purposeful as a graduated space. Let me break it down. When your business starts performing that well, that's a great opportunity for you to do more in a world that needs you. Thank you. So I would tell stories that would help people perceive that and understand that. So I might tell a story about the work that we do uh, with third world countries, how we have supported kids in Cambodia to uh, have shoes on their feet, how we did a partnership 
and uh, very honored to do it with an organization called Mind Valley to put, um, never thought about the fact that third world countries did not have recreational activities set up. They didn't have soccer, they didn't have football, they didn't have basketball. So jerseys and basketballs and all those things, I had no idea all of those things were available for us to even play in. So I might tell a story that looks something like that. So there's a power in story, but I want you guys to get this. <clears throat> My understanding of why I should do a story was based on the client. Are you guys seeing that? I think that we often think, how do I tell a good story, but we're not thinking, where is the client when they hear the story? Where are they in their psyche? Where are they, what is the demographic of the client? And what is the psychographic of the client? And how can I create a measure of disruption so that they can get, navigate from where they are to where they desire to be? Here is a breakdown in telling stories. Are you guys ready? If you're ready, say ready. ready. One of the breakdowns is that many people tell stories in an art of persuasion and manipulation. The way that you ethically tell a story is so that people can understand this is what I think. Here's a, an opportunity for me to evaluate if that thought process still serves me. Your value in a story is not to change people's thinking. Where do we get that right? I don't have a right to tell you what to think or that my thinking is better than yours. I don't even think that's a fair way to be in life. I think everybody has their own unique perception. So the value of sharing story is so that the audience can identify whether the audience is in a boardroom or the audience is in a conference space like this. It's so you can evaluate, is what I think about today still valuable? If I kept the framework of the thinking as it relates to success by my grandmother's standards, my grandmother was born in 1920. We just voted yesterday in America. My grandmother did not have that right. It's not even 100 years old. Hello? So if I used my grandmother's perception on success, would it still serve me? Probably not. That's like asking you, are you gonna eat mayonnaise that's a year old? It's separated, it's toxic, and it was once good if you like mayonnaise, but it doesn't work for you anymore. Are you guys understanding what I'm saying? So the power of my ability to tell a story happened as I continued to create success. And I created this product called the 100K Club, and the value of the 100K Club was to teach leaders how to monetize their story at a high level. But I started understanding as I taught them, there were some breakdowns in our own methodology, and I'm gonna teach you guys what I teach them. Does that work for you? So that you guys can avoid the pitfalls that they were in. So just so you guys know, this is, um, a message for this kind of person. If you're not this kind of person on this slide deck, I probably will not be the valuable speaker for you today. And that's okay, because I get that out of the couple of hundred people that are in this room, I will touch, move, and inspire each of you. Undoubtedly, I will in some way, shape, or form. And what I have a high understanding of is there's probably a handful of you that really came for the message I have. That's why Lisa brought me. Because some of you will really relate to me, some of you will really relate to Derek, some of you will really relate to Sean, some of you will really relate to Lisa. Like, you'll choose what your handoff is, and guess what, that's really okay. I think we think we gotta like everybody. I don't like every one of you in this room. I, I know it. I, you over there. I'm, I don't like you, you back there. No, I'm not pointing to anyone. <laughs> okay. 
But I think it's okay to know who your teacher is. I came for that. You guys get what I'm saying? Okay, so this is the kind of person that I bring value for, where you say, I've got a big vision, and it's bigger than the community that I'm in, and I'm outgrowing the community that I'm in, but I don't know who to tell about it. Because my community stays in a container, and so I feel like if I say something, then there's a story that's gonna be made up about me, so instead you just kinda of keep it in your head, you keep it in your heart, you keep it in your soul. You may drip little pieces of your greatness into the world, but you won't play full out. You let the Gwyneth Paltrow's of the world be Gwyneth's. You let the Julia Roberts of the world be Julia's. You let the Oprah Winfrey's of the world be Oprah's, the Richard Branson's of the world be the Richards, but you don't believe that there's space for you to be there, but inside you ache. You go, I know I got more, but you don't see it in your community, and so you're challenged by that. I speak to that kind of leader. I come and I disrupt it because there's a timeline to your gifting. And so if I show up in your space, it is for pure agitation that you would recognize you are Godzilla in an apartment building and it's time for you to break free. Anybody breaking free today? Well, that's a sad break room. <laughs> so, very succinctly, that's my big promise. Okay, that's my high commitment to you, is that if I'm for you, I will make a difference for you. And if I'm not, I will at least inspire you and you will smile. And that works for me too. So here's my ambitious agenda in the next eight minutes. You guys think I can do it? <laughs> my ambitious agenda in the next eight minutes is that I teach you how to master the V, how to story sell, the holy grail of converting through story, where you get stuck in story, the formula for enrolling story, the critical story anchors, and the three questions to answer when converting through a story. You guys ready? Do you guys have faith in me that I can do it? I have zero faith in me that I can do that. So I have a plan. So here's the plan. One of the things as I facilitate this concept to you, because everything that I teach you today is going to be conceptual and theoretical. Why? Because there's no true practice. You're not practicing it. There's no role play. There's no engagement in exercise. You can't really iron it into the DNA and fabric of your, of your thinking. Not yet. Not yet. So there's a danger zone that you'll hear it and you'll get inspired by it, but then a tweet will come through, a blog alert will come through your feed, uh, your kid will text you about something, your husband will remind you you haven't had sex in a month, Something will happen to distract you from the point that you had a breakthrough. Some of y'all will laugh at that tomorrow at 2 o'clock Hawaii Standard Time. <laughs> and generally, when we remove ourselves from the opportunity to break through, what happens is we're playing one of these roles. Who's ever studied the drama triangle? If you've never seen the TED Talk, it's phenomenal. You have? Okay, guys, just so you know, this is how you raise your hand. I don't know how you guys do it in Canada. Do you guys raise your hand up like this, or is it, because it seems very polite and tight right now. <laughs> it seems very tight. Okay, so in America, we go like this, right? And I don't know if those, if you're not doing it because you use organic deodorant, and it expires relatively quickly. Yeah, I used, I used organic vanilla this morning. I don't know if it's gonna hold me till three o'clock. I think, I think I'm gonna need something else to act it. All right, so let's just try it again. This is how, can you guys just practice? Let's just practice raising your hand. This is what it looks, okay, 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 good. All right, put it back down on the count of one, two, three, up, one, two, three. All right, and down, one, two, three, up. All right, good, wave it in the air. Like you just don't care, do a little bit in your chair, like yeah, 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 okay, good. All right, just making sure y'all can me. So when you, if you've never seen the drama triangle, take a note of that and watch the TED Talk. It's really brilliant. And, um, in that TED Talk talks about where we lose ourselves as we're trying to create success. We find ourselves trapped 
here. So I'm just going to awaken you guys very quickly. The rescuer in this room will say, oh my God, I wish Sally was here. She would have loved Allison. And you will listen to me for Sally the whole time. You will take notes for Sally, pictures for Sally, and you will record me. You will even come up to me after and say, I want to take a picture so my friend Sally can see me and you together. <laughs> so you will learn for someone else. Don't do that. You're here with me. Be with me. I came for you. You got it? Here's the other thing that will stop you from learning with me today. The persecutor. No, let's go to the victim first. The victim, let's go to the victim. The victim is fine. The victim will say, but Allison, that won't work for me. The victim will be just so like, oh my God, it just, it can't happen. And by the way, I know my victim sounds female, but that's really a man. <laughs> The persecutor is so wonderfully unique. The persecutor will say, you know what, Allison, I love what you said, but that won't work for me. And you'll actually come up to me afterwards to tell me how much my talk won't work for you, but that I was good. So you'll compliment me, but tell me I have no relevance to you. <laughs> so let me just invite you guys, take those hats off and be authentically a thousand percent with me. This is what I need from you. Can we all agree to this? Can we all agree to this? Can we all agree to this? I need you to adult today and I need you to do it for you. Here's what I know for sure. Is that out of everything that I'm going to facilitate to you guys in the next four minutes, <laughs> If I taught you for eight hours a day, six days a week, 12 weeks nonstop, that would be 576 hours of content. That's how much content I have to share with you today. Because for the last eight years I've been doing this work and what I've been doing has led leaders to generate $105 million in real money, it's not monopoly money. So I had a full 45 minutes to play with you guys today. But obviously, this is a community that prefers quickies. <laughs> Some of you that came with your life partners, the partner is like, that's not funny. <laughs> I didn't come to expose your truth. <laughs> so here's what I get. <clears throat> what I get is that I have a resource for you, and I want you guys to have it, and I brought some for you guys. And this, by the way, I will tell you, I believe that people who desire take action. So with love and respect, I am going, come on girl, there you go, absolutely. So, there we go, all right. Uh, here's what I love, you don't know what it is. I know 
in the world. I love and respect this woman tremendously. And so she doesn't bring just anybody to the platform, so you guys already get that. But I want you to have a real understanding that when you get story right, people will not see you, they will see themselves. People will not trust you, they will trust themselves. People will come back connected and you may go, but I'm a plumber. Why is that valuable? Because people are looking at a thousand plumbers and they gotta trust you. My girlfriend called me this morning and said, I need a referral to your handyman. I said, you told me this weekend you had a referral. She said, I got on the phone with me and the first story he told me was about, and she went on to tell me what the story was. She said, I felt so disrespected and it wasn't even my home. Like he's a handyman and he killed the sale with a story. So my money story got live. If you guys go there, you can only go there if you're on Facebook, okay? This is gonna take you through a Facebook process. I invite you guys to pull out your devices, go there, and guess what? You will get that version electronically. Yeah? So those are the prints, but you will get that version electronically. But guess what else you'll get? This entire presentation, because there's just no way I could teach it all to you, but guess what you can do? You can study it, yes? Does that feel good for you guys? Yeah. Now, let me say this. You can, you can go there, you can get it, and then we are sending you a message that says, are you done getting messages from us? Type stop, and you get to opt out. So it's not an opt-in that you're left in forever, okay? So just so you guys know, you can literally get my promises, then we're gonna send you a message, and we're gonna say you can opt out. Does that feel good? So you guys get to choose if you wanna stick it, if you wanna keep moving forward. All right. Is there anybody that didn't write that down or didn't go to the URL already? How does procrastination work for you in your life? <laughs> All right, so once again, go to mymoneystory.com. Go like the way I did that. So my number one commitment is around the conversation of money. And here's what I wanna tell you. The reason that many of you won't tell a powerful story is these 11 points right here. Again, you'll get this entire slide presentation. But these 11 questions are the number one things we discovered when I created the methodology for people to make $100,000 every time they stood on a platform. This is what I realized didn't work. How many of you have sold something and then you, and then you realize it doesn't work like you thought it was going to work? Okay, this is how we reap what... Y'all did that Canada Polite thing again, I didn't. Y'all was like, hey, so how many of you have sold something only to realize it didn't work? Didn't work, okay. This is our reframe of that. We realized, okay, there are some things that stop people from using our signature methodology. Here's what it was. Number one, they were unique. <clears throat> they wouldn't show up in who they were. Number two, they didn't have an exciting backstory or maybe they were afraid to stir people up. Maybe they weren't a stand. Maybe they got on a platform and tolerated what the platform gave them. Maybe they walked into a room and uh, anybody in here ever go and present at local organizations? Yeah? And you know people, so you just feel kind of tight because you know the people in the room and you go, well, they should know what I do, but yet they're not giving you business. Hello? Yeah. You're stuck in one of these 11 points right here. You're stuck. So you'll want to review this and say, where am I stuck? And then you'll want to say, all right, let me get unstuck by mastering the B. And this is how you do it. You got your pen, you got your paper? All right, this is my wrap up for you guys here. A V, draw it on your paper. Just draw a big V. And a V has a high, it has a low, and it has another high, right? That's how a V looks, okay. So high number one is shaped like this. You brag really big to tell a story. You brag big one, you brag big two, you apologize and you do a bold promise. Guess who just did that? I did. I opened up. And I told you guys what I do in the world, 
how I do it. I bragged one, I bragged two, then I apologized and said, I don't have enough time to teach you. And then I gave a bold promise, but if you go to this site, you'll get this. And guess what else? You'll walk away inspired as a reflection of today. You'll have the technical ability, plus you'll have the inspiration. I did the V right for you. Yeah? Here's what I want you guys to think about. When you think about bragging, it is simply a way that you relate to the audience and all you're doing is telling them, this is the value that I bring to the market. That's all you're doing. You're saying, this is how I bring distinction. Did anybody at any time in the room, be honest, feel like you felt me brag? I had no intention to be braggadocious. I didn't talk about the money in my bank account. I didn't show you yacht pictures. I didn't show you my cars. I didn't show you my luxury home, my gated community. I didn't show you any of those things. None of that was important. And by the way, that wasn't a bragging right there. That was just, I did I was just telling you what I didn't do. So when you tell a story, you walk people through this and then you apologize. And the apology is typically wrapped around in Listen, I'm not able to take X amount of people, or the apology is, I don't have enough time to share this with you, but I could do it deeper if we did it this way. Like, it's really true, because how many of you in the middle of um, a pitch in front of a room feel like you can't get it all out? Anybody? Yeah, this will help you. If you just say, I can't, but I'll give you a tool. I mean, unless Lisa gave me a full week to train you, I could not get all of my message out to you. It's unrealistic, and it's unrealistic all of the time. So then the bottom of the V looks like this. It looks like you telling what your expertise is, which we would title a methodology that you <coughs> created either in your life or educational search, Maybe it's a low point you discover if you have a, a relationship brand. Any life coaches or business coaches in the room or anyone that, that does direct to consumer sales? Okay, so that can really relate there, but even if you own, anybody own brick and mortars in the room? Anybody? Okay, good. So that low point is, this is what's not working, this is what I created to solve what doesn't work. Are you guys catching it? Yes, kind of? Got it, you got it. Okay, good, just make it sure. So then there's a high two. And the high two is where you describe the desire and the pathway to fulfilling their related pleasure principle. Now, this is a disruption, guys, because most people will sell out of pain. Most people will enroll or tell story to inspire fear. I don't think that's a good way to do things. I don't think you need it. So there are other facilitators you can listen to that will teach you that way. If you feel aligned with that way of thinking, they're your teachers, I'm not. I think you can inspire people to, there's pleasure available. Yeah? Yeah. I just think it's a way to feel good in the way that you position and sell and talk. You know, the only honesty is not negative honesty. You know when people say, can I be honest? You know they're about to tell you some bad shit. You're like, oh, man, oh, man. You know, it doesn't feel amazing. So just very honestly, guys, I think that this is where you announce you are the savior. You're the answer. And if you're not teaching, you're treating your business and solution like you are the answer, then you're missing out. And your client is missing out. And there's a big value that they're missing out on. So I just want you guys to understand that when you go through the art and the practice of your story, in my opinion, the way that you ethically frame the story and share what's possible for people matters. 
So I'm going to wrap up. Did you guys get a nugget of value today, by the way? Can you believe it's been 45 minutes already? Right? So let me just tell you guys what's in the rest of the slides so that you guys can see. You're going to see about the unknown art of story selling. So we learned so much about storytelling, but we are going to talk about story selling. How many of you are VIP and will be with us tomorrow? Okay, great. So I'm going to dig deeper into this and do Q&A tomorrow, so we'll be able to go deeper into that. But if not, you can self-study off of these slides, okay? So I'm going to go through that in the slides. You're also going to go through the holy grail of conversion and what that would look like for you and how you walk through story, problem, agitate, and solve. You're going to go through in your self-study about where you get stuck and how you do your unique value position, your unique sales position, your unique enrollment position, and your unique pricing position, all through the power of story, all right? And so, as I wrap up, I just wanna tell you guys that when I look at why story matters, these are two clients that are real, their names are just changed, but they're real. When they started learning the power of story in their presentation, Sarah came and she was generating $750,000 a year. She wanted to get to over a million. She learned the power of story and started using it in her presentations, upped her conversion, and did $500,000 in two tour stops. Two tour stops. So she stopped, did a room like this, spoke, so we had another client, Maya, did the same thing, and within 120 days, it took her about 120 days to build up to her one-day sale. She did $77,000. I think a lot of people show you numbers. They don't tell you how long it took the client to make it happen. So I want you guys to know that. So when you read this guide, someone showed, let me see that. It says, making money is killing your business, very simply, if you are focusing more on making the money than you are on the ethical framing of how you bring value to the market, that's how you'll get exhausted and start to kill your business because you'll kill your own vision and it won't feel good. And I won't ask you to raise your hands on that because I already know it's existent. So as I say my last piece, do you want to hear the story about Jamaica? Or do you want to hear the little engine that could, my reframe on it? Which one? Jamaica, hand up. All right, little engine that could, hand up. I can't do both, we don't have time. Jamaica, little engine that could. Okay, so Jamaica wins. All right, so here it is. Ready? Y'all got my walk off music ready? Y'all ready? Okay. I went to Jamaica, and I told you guys in 2015, my mother ascended, and I used the word ascended instead of passed away or died. A client called and said, can you go to this mastermind and teach my people? I know you're not traveling right now, but it's a small group of people. I'll pay for you to go. You can rest every day. We're going to be there for six days. You can rest every day. I want you to just teach one day but I'll literally pay for you to come and rest. It's very sweet. So I said yes, if you fly me first class. <laughs> and, so, and so she did. We get to Jamaica. Are y'all listening? We get to Jamaica, and when we get there, she wants me to do this, uh, what do you call it? Zip line. But they had a different zip line. They had one that went this way, and for the first time ever, I saw one that dropped this way. So they said, you're gonna do the one that drops this way. Now, as y'all can see, I'm not the most compact of women on the planet. And I just thought, I don't know who's gonna get me down there. And there was this big, fine, glistening man, and he said, now, I, my Jamaican accent, my Russian accent, 
and my Asian accent all sound the same. <laughs> so just so you know. And he says, this is gonna be bad, beware. He says, I will get you. And I said, are you sure? He says, call, go, I will get you. And I'm looking down and I'm looking out and I'm looking down and I'm looking out and I'm looking down and I'm looking out. Are you guys listening? This story is so real and I'm trying so hard to keep my composure as I tell it because I'm like feeling Jamaica. We're there and if you've ever zip lined in another country, you know they put you on these wobbly poles out there, right? You're not on anything luxurious or opulent. And I'm trying like, oh my God, I'm gonna, okay. And so there was a tree and there were people that were waiting to do the hop over to come, then you do the zip line down. And I told the girl, you go ahead of me. And I leaned on the tree. And when I leaned on the tree, I had no idea it was covered in a native bug. They were black and they were crawling all over me. And I am on a pole that is the circumference of this. And I can't hop or scream or run. And the bugs are all over my skin. And so I'm like, oh, and the guy just starts beating them off of me. And he says, I tell you, you can't stay on the hill. You got to go down. And I said, I'm trying, I can't even. And I'm trying to figure this thing out. And all of a sudden, this adventure now is bringing my life full frontal for me. And he says, do you need me to push you? <laughs> and I said, I said, please, please push me. And he goes, he says, I can push you, but you must leap. Because when you jump, if I push you, you will burn on the rope. So you've got to lift your legs up, tuck them under your chin, and leap down. I said, lift and tuck and what? I said, what? Uh, uh, I'm trying to figure it out. And I said, on the count of three, let's do it. And guys, the pole is wobbling. On the left of me is a tree covered in bugs. Beneath me is a man saying, I got you, I will get you. <laughs> And inside is this horrific fear that I'm gonna make a leap and nothing's gonna catch me. My mother's ascension that year left me parentless. And even though I was almost 40, I felt like, who catches me? When we're in entrepreneurial spaces like this and Lisa's teaching and training and coaching. She's coaching you to make bigger leaps in life. And many of you suit up with all the armor that she gives you. And then you walk out to the curb. And that's your jump. When you jump that small, you don't get anything but arthritis in your destiny, baby. <laughs> you got to make big leaps. Are you guys hearing me? And I get that life right now feels like you're on that pole and it's wobbly. And I get that there's a tree with infested whatever. And you guys name that whatever's happening in your life. Whatever's in your bank account, whatever's not working, whatever's not serving you, whatever is not, you got all that going on. It's time for you to make the leap. And so with true respect, you guys, you have to jump and know that you will be caught. And so the story of Jamaica is that he said, I will push you, but I cannot leap for you. And so today we'll push you, but no one can make the leap for you. Do I have some people in the room? Yes, give it up you guys.
Let's hear it one more time for Alison Bird. She needs no filter.